Today we'll review VeloComp's PowerPod. Hello Legends and Super Legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. In today's video, we review a copy of VeloComp's PowerPod version 3 that uh, we received at the channel. And I'm gonna start going through to try to set it up. I've already opened the box. It's, it comes in this box with the Velo, the PowerPod on there. It says PowerPod, Power Meter, VeloComp, and it has a VeloComp.com. That's the manufacturer. So it came directly from VeloComp. Um, decided to give this a try because this thing, I already took it out of the box and charged it because that's the first thing you need to do. When you get it, you get this card. It's an instruction card that's in there. But basically they explain the layout, you know, the different buttons on the unit. And then they tell you step by step, the, the steps are numbered what to do to set it up. Now, this is by no means complete because they also include a card that has a link on it and also these little QR codes that you can scan. But these will take you to the comprehensive calibration. That's really the only thing I'm going to use that for because everything else here is pretty straightforward. First thing you have to do is charge up the unit, which they tell you on here. Then they tell you why it's charging. You need to go to your bike and set up the mount. They ship a mount standard, a standard GoPro mount. Okay, I'm not going to use this because I have a combo mount that goes under the computer on the bike. It's a lot cleaner than having all these things on your bars. That's another reason I like this because this thing weighs 43 grams. I put the picture here when I weighed it. So I charged it, weighed it, and then started this review. So at this point in the steps, they've, they've requested that you mount the unit. So you mount it, I'm gonna mount it right there. If you were using that, the, the clamp that they sent, you would of course mount that on your on your bar like that and then Put the unit in there on the card they tell you that the unit is not level you're supposed to put the unit slightly down which is kind of a judgment thing because you know what's slightly for one person but they, they kind of tell you that put it slightly down and then you pair your speed unit you need an ant speed unit to be able to use the power pod and uh, I have a Garmin speed unit on that rear wheel, and that's already paired to my head unit, but it will need to be paired to this. Um, it comes with the clamp. They also include the Allen key that you need, which is a three uh, millimeter for using this guy, which is nice. I think that's, that's kind of nice. I mean, having a three millimeter Allen key is not that hard to find but the fact that they included that is nice what they also included was to give you the option of using this optional it's almost like a key so that you don't have to use an allen key to hold the the, the velocom unit the power pod you could use this it's almost like a quick hand so you can you can just turn it by hand i am not going to use this because the last thing i need is more stuff sticking out so you can see right here this is how the unit is going to be mounted right there i use the combo unit because then it goes right under the computer that's the porthole for the wind right there and they said that it needs to be slightly down so when i'm done i'm gonna it's level right here i'm gonna tilt it down like that okay i just wanted to so that's how nice it looks and it's just sleek it's all black so if you're not in the know you're not going to know what that is i like that and it's easy to transfer from bike to bike obviously especially if you have more than one mount because the last thing i want to be doing is messing with removing the mount from there so this other bike will have a combo unit also and so will the call nago so if you were using this on your bike I would recommend that you get an extra clamp like this and put it on another bike. And then when it's time to switch, you're just dealing with this. You don't have to mess with that. And right here is where you can tilt it before you tie that 
nut down. So I'm going to use this nut on mine. Um, this is it right here, this bolt. That's what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use what they sent. I already have some of these because you use that for the camera also. You can even mount the camera on that combo unit. It's just a GoPro mount. So I just wanted to share that. And then once that's mounted, then I'll pair it with the speed sensor. The pairing is pretty easy. There is a button on the side of the unit. You see the light? That's the light. When it's off, that means it's fully charged, meaning when you plug it in and it's charging, it blinks uh, red. And once it's fit fully charged, it goes off. And this is the light you will be using for most of your charging and so forth. So this button is what you're going to use for pairing. And the, the card has all the instruction you need. So to pair it with my speed unit, what they're saying is that I need to hold this power button on the power pod for four seconds after I've awakened the speed sensor by spinning the wheel. So I'm going to mount it first and then I'm going to pair it to that. And then after that, you pretty much go into where you're going to do the calibration. These two prongs right there that you see, these two go in between. This was very tight. The combo unit under here was very tight. So um, I basically had to just gradually work that in to where you could see the hole for the screw. You can see, now you can see to see the hole. It took a while to get that lined up because I had to kind of wiggle it because I didn't want to put any pressure on the the uh, power pod because this, this was very tight. So now I can do this. For me, once I get this set up, all of these bikes will have the combo unit. Now, I want to stress that I already have this K-Edge right there. You can see I already have K-Edge on my bike. So I'm not going to go buy another combo unit. What I did was I bought just the bottom piece that you need, combo mount GoPro interface right there. See, let's get the camera to focus on it. And I, something just told me to search for it because they don't really advertise this stuff that much. And I'm glad I came across it because it's about a third of the price of replacing this thing with the unit that they have that already has this on the bottom. Then you end up stuck with this. So it just didn't make any sense. It just seemed wasteful. And so all I did was I bought this piece and that's what you see under here because all my bikes had this gopro already but this is the cleanest way to do it i don't have all this stuff on my handlebars i wanted to share that with you also if you're considering doing that you already have a k edge just get that piece well it took a bit of uh time for me to line up those holes in it because this mount is just too tight so it has no bearing on the unit itself it's really the gopro mount that i chose to use now i got the screw in there and I'm going to, to tighten it. Let me back this off just a bit. Let's see here, back the screw off. Because if I do this, that's pretty level right there. So it's a tight, tilt it down slightly. So that's a slight tilt there. I'll go with that. And the, the, it just, it tilts, you know, before you tighten it. So that's kind of what you want to do to follow their instructions. I like this, uh, cleaner because I'm not going to be moving them around that frequently. I put it on the blue bike um, just for this video, but it may end up being here most of the time until I decide to switch it around. But you can see all I have to deal with is this bolt once I get everything set up on the bikes. And this stores up to four profiles. You want to make sure the unit is not shaking or anything still moving there is a lock nut on the other side of the combo unit right there that what you see there it basically it's, locks it in place okay so the bolt has stopped so even though it didn't go all the way in see right there it has stopped and on these kind of things, you don't want to force it. It will not go anymore. And that's basically what it is because what's happening is since I've added the thickness of these guys right there, okay, it's reached the lock nut and it's tight. 
It's very tight. And that's the thing with these bolts. Once they stop like that, you're done. There's no reason to tie it anymore because this thing ain't going anywhere. So that's, that's, that's perfect. The bolt does not have to be flush, apparently. So let's pair this. I need to wake up my speed sensor, which is on the wheel right here. You can put out the rear or the front. I usually have it on the rear, but I don't use it that much. It's just been sitting. So I just put a new battery in there because the other one was dead. I only got this to use on a trainer. And so let's spin this. Let's see, did the light come on? Yeah, you see the light blinking? So it's awake. I'm gonna push this button next to the light right here. So I hold it for four seconds. Okay, I'm gonna push this on the side. It said, when, when it's red, it says the parent was unsuccessful. So let's, one, two, three, four. There, blinking green. Release button when flashing green. After successful pairing, the light is solid yellow. I was never able to get the solid yellow until I held that button for five seconds. Then it got solid yellow, which is inconsistent solid yellow. with the instructions. I guess that's as yellow as it's going to get. It was very finicky. That is kind of finicky. The prerequisite is that make sure your speed sensor is already paired to your head unit. Especially if you haven't been using it for a while. That's so the, the next thing they're that's saying the first is thing. pair the power pod to my ant bike computer. If your so speed, I'm going to turn on my computer. If your speed sensor is not already paired, it will not. your head unit will not pick up the, the power pod. The solid yellow meant that it finally recognized my speed sensor. It took it a while. That's too weird. The it solid yellow bit, also means that it's uh, waiting for finicky. configuration. It did not work consistently with the instructions. So I'm going in my computer and tell it to find sensors. I'm going to add a sensor. So I'm going to look for the power right there. I'm trying to make sure I'm filming correctly as I use the sensor because the tendency to move the camera. Ah, it's got an ID already. It's already picked up this unit. I'm going to go ahead and just do power. 37174 is the number. I'm going to add it. That was easy. So once I paired it with the speed sensor, it was easy to add it to the head unit. I'm going to rename it because uh, 37174 means nothing to me. Calibrate power sensor. Look at that. It's asking me to calibrate. Well, I have to calibrate outside, so it's middle of the night. I'm not going outside. So I would say no. We'll do it another time. I'm going to just give it the name, but that's good. So it's working. The name. I'm going to change the name. And uh, move that over there. That means nothing to me. That's the, the ID. It's in the code. I'm going to call it. Uh, power pod. I'll just say pod or P pod. Let's make this here P and then go back and say O D. P pod. That's what's going to show up. That means more to me than that number that was there. That number is in, I believe, the sensor details. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure is. That's the sensor ID. So I don't need to see the sensor ID. I gave it a name. See the calibration prompt? It's going to prompt me to calibrate. That's enabled. I didn't do that. It was enabled already. If you click the about, it lets you know battery status, new, software version, manufacturer number eight, model number 2053. I don't see the serial number, but this is everything about the Velocomp unit that is showing up on my Garmin. So the next thing is we'll calibrate, but I'm going to add it. After I calibrate, I will add it to my screens where you can add power, your training, training screens per se. Um, it's going to prompt me to calibrate since it's automatically, once you add it, it prompts you to calibrate. So, um, and if it doesn't, I will just manually calibrate. The uh, calibration back. prompt can be turned and off. So, I did not calibrate using this calibration. I calibrated it with the unit itself, which is, is the the, the, the orange 
So now light. On there. And so so we calibrate it outside. See where it says calibrate on there? Power meter calibrate. That's that prompt. You can turn off that prompt because you don't calibrate in here. I'm going to put it on. There's a training, what they call activity profiles. I have one that has. Um, uh, basically, what I'm doing here, for those of you who the don't own a Garmin, it does not apply. A I'm Garmin head unit. I'm just adding field, a field to fields. a training profile be too many fields that will show power. Stuff, so and that's what you can use for your great. calibration. And it's like a cans, training page. That's all it is. Grade, so we're going to go ahead and move to the calibration lab, from here. Distance. Okay, I just wanted to show you all on the Garmin. Um, I powered the unit on. Once you power the unit on after it has recognize your speed sensor it will default to the the, the solid yellow which says is ready to calibrate then when you turn on your garmin or whatever you have paired it to the head unit in your head unit on the main screen do not use this calibrate on the main screen of your garmin because powerpod does not calibrate with this garmin has a default calibration prompt that you saw when i actually added the unit it works with other power meters, but not the power part. In fact, you can disable the prompt, which is what I've done on my unit. You're going to power this. Basically, you're going to calibrate from the unit itself by just simply adding a power field to your training page and go ahead and run the calibration, as you're going to see in a little bit. They tell you here that when you get a red, the pairing was unsuccessful. That's what we got earlier. And then... I pushed the button again for four seconds and then got a solid yellow, which meant it says after successful pairing, the light is solid yellow. And that's what I got right there. So 4D occurred before 4C. So it's possible that your speed sensor will be a little bit of a headache getting it to talk to the uh, power pod. But as far as Garmin picking it up, it was already there. As soon as I got in there, it was easy. You guys saw I had to just rename it. It found it. As soon as I just added a sensor, it found it. Now, the unit is sitting here because I powered it on, and it's just sitting in solid yellow. Until I calibrate, it will always be solid yellow. When the calibration is successful and you're done, you basically get a green solid light on the unit when you turn it on. And basically, green means go. That's what's on the card. So right there, after calibration, this is the actual ride. And it's more involved than what you see there. You have to use five minutes of riding for it to calibrate. And it's a one-time thing, and then you're done. Then it says starting a new ride, solid green, green means go. All right, Legends, we're going to do a calibration ride. You see that's yellow, solid yellow. Uh, I've got the field for power on here already. And basically, it will stay in yellow mode until you calibrate every time you turn it on. It's paired to the speed sensor, but I haven't calibrated it. So let's start the calibration ride. And all this, this is the basic calibration where you're going to ride until it counts to 100. And you want to just ride without stopping much. If you look at the power meter and I says 1, it's just going to count to 100. Those are not power numbers. The way it says 4, it's just counting. And I want to just make sure I don't stop. The uh, field that I chose for my training page that displays power is just power. It's not power for 3 seconds, 10 seconds, yada, yada, yada. This unit provides what is called nominal power. So it's already smooth. You don't need to select those averages in your head unit when you're using the power pod. <laughs> Displaying watts now. When it's done. The numbers are reflecting what I'm doing. This is kind of a downhill here, so I'm really not putting out a lot of watts. See, it says 812. Now I'm gonna go hard on this hill. This is like a 2% climb. I'm in a small gear and I'm revving. Look at the watts. I just hammered up that hill. It's dropping because I'm done. Okay, so calibration is complete. Back to zero because I'm coasting right now. But I wanted to just show you all real briefly. So once the calibration is done in the future, you push that button, 
Light flashes green, you're ready to go. The power part will turn off if your speed sensor does not move for 20 minutes, it turns itself off. If you want to turn it off on demand, you have to push this button five times in succession. One, two, three, four, five. Solid green, yellow, red, off. That actually worked perfectly. That's exactly what the research indicated.